Apple Intelligence launched with a lot of buzz. But one of the features that caught my attention was the ability to remove anything from your photo just by circling around or clicking or tapping at it. Now this feature came into the new iPhone and Mac OS as well. Now as a Photoshop user for the last 20 years and removing stuff from photos for more than a decade, I wanted to see where it stands in comparison to Photoshop. We have a series of photos to test and let's see if Apple intelligence surpasses Adobe intelligence. So without any further ado, let's get started. Back in the magical world of the Photos app this time and you can also do this in the later iPhones that support Apple intelligence. And here we have a photo. We will try to remove this subject. Let's go to the edit section inside of that there is this new cleanup let's open that up you need to enable Apple intelligence for this to work and now you can just click or brush over the stuff that you want to remove I like the animation right here pretty magical and it automatically selects the subject and oh my gosh it did a pretty good job now there are some shabby areas here there is this sign of continuous patterns and textures but that's fine overall this is not bad so I'm just going to circle around here one more time and it only gets worse. But overall, this is okay. This is what we get. Now let us do the same thing in Photoshop and let's see how it compares. To keep it fair, we are going to select the remove tool and turn off generative fill for now, right? Because generative fill uses credits. Apple intelligence doesn't use credits, at least for now. Let's circle around the subject here as well. Oh my gosh, Apple Intelligence is better in this case for this example. So on your left, you have Apple Intelligence and on your right, Adobe Intelligence and Apple really did good on this one. However, if you turn on Generative AI, let's click on the drop down and turn on Generative AI. Let's create a brand new layer. And in this case, if we use the remove tool again, now this time it's gonna take a little more while. But damn, look at the results. It's pretty amazing. It also created the details there. This is pretty darn good and absolutely realistic. Now, if there are certain areas that you don't like, like these areas, you can paint over those areas again if they don't look realistic to you. And it's going to generate that again. But keep in mind, it is using generative AI here and your credits are being spent. This looks fantastic and I can actually go with it. So in this example, the result was kind of a mixed bag, but not all images are the same. Take a look at this one. Click on edit and let's say you want to remove this guy. By the way, men, if you see your friend, your buddy, your brother from another mother talking to a girl, gathering the courage to do that, please, I request you, please don't be the third wheel. Let them talk. That might be their only shot for getting to know each other for the first time. Please don't ruin it. Sorry to digress. I also like how it recognizes it and this was bad. Let's get back to Photoshop and see where it stands. Here again, I'm going to turn off generative AI and see how it performs. There you go. Now it is not using any generative AI and this is terrible. Instead of removing the third wheel, this is turning into a four by four. Now let's just turn on generative AI and now let's try it again. Gosh, this is so good and at least it's usable. So Apple intelligence on the left, Photoshop on the right without generative fill, Photoshop on the right with generative AI turned on. Now the next photo is really where we start to see a major difference. This is one that I took in Colorado, lots of beautiful rocks. Let's go to edit, let's go to clean up, lots of people distractions and have a look at this. It automatically starts those lighting, ambient light effects on top of the distractions. So instead of having to circle around, you can just click and it removes it and it did a pretty amazing job. Let's zoom in and check. It's pretty good. Let's click, gone, click, gone. It didn't detect that person. So I'm just gonna circle around it and it's gone as well. Click, gone. But that changed the shape of the rock as well. Click, click. Now there is a repeating pattern there as you can see. And let's see if Photoshop does it better. This is a distraction. Let's click, remove it, click, remove it. So far so good. But what about these people? Let's try. And that's where it begins to mess up. I'm going to try here one more time. That's okay. And there are a few falls here and there, but apart from that, this is not bad. Now let's try to do the same thing in Photoshop. By the way, Photoshop also has a feature to find distractions. So I'm going to click on find distractions, people. It automatically detects all the distracting people. And we're going to turn off generative AI for now. Hit enter or return. And it removed it all and did a terrible job. So let's try to do that manually. Let's go back, let's create a brand new layer and we're gonna keep generative AI off for now and slowly and gradually try to remove these people and see which one does better. Now, of course, we are giving this more time and have a look. When it comes to getting a clean result, this is definitely so much better. 
Let's do this subject here. See, it's so good. Removed. Similarly here. Oh my gosh, look at the clean result. And now we will try to remove her without changing the shape of the rock. This is really good. And if you wanted to join a few lines here, just paint over those and it joins that perfectly. If you wanted to create certain shapes in certain way, this is pretty good for that. Similarly, let's remove the rest of the distractions. Now, what I like about Photoshop is that you don't see a repeating pattern here, unlike the one created with Apple Intelligence. Keep in mind, all this while, generative AI is turned off. That's pretty good, even without generative AI. I have to commend Adobe on that. Now, there are a few problems here and there. Let's remove everybody and then we'll worry about that. It's getting better, but this is what we can get with generative AI turned off. Looking at the results side by side, on your left you have Apple Intelligence and on your right, Photoshop. Now keep in mind with Photoshop, we have still not used generative AI. This is all without generative AI. Let's zoom in and take a look. You can clearly see the difference in the details as we move around. Photoshop retains the details. However, this creates a repeating pattern, clearly gives a telltale sign that this was edited. Similarly here, some weird spots. Let's take a look at this area. What is happening right over there? Now let's take a look at the main area. Now in this case, Apple Intelligence did a little better job than this one where it merged it. But if you zoom into the details, you would notice that there's this pattern here, which is not here. Now, if with Photoshop, we used generative AI for just these people, it would make a massive difference. So let's select the remove tool again, and this time turn on generative AI. And let's do it one by one. And that was fast and this is pretty good. Definitely usable and I love it. Let's have a look at the before and after. So here is the before and here is the after. Zoom in a bit. Here's the before and here's the after. Pretty clean result. So again, Apple Intelligence on the left, Photoshop on the right with generative AI. Now, some of you might say Apple Intelligence was made for removing distractions. And if we try to do that by going to clean up, there are a lot of people here. It does detect all of them. All you have to do is to click on them, click again. But you know, it does leave out a lot of unnecessary details. Let's click here, click here. It's all gone, but it's not, the results are not very clean. See, it's creating some weird details there. Let's try to remove these people. That was clean. Let's try to remove these areas. And again, it created something weird. This is all what we can create with this. Let's try to remove all of those people right there. And it didn't even detect those people at the back. And there are people it detected here. So I'm gonna click, click again, and it is just creating little versions of those people. I don't know what is happening, but it's kind of okay. Maybe if you go in and work a little harder, you can get a better result. Now we have the same image opened on Photoshop and we are not going to do a thing. Let's create a brand new layer and keep generative AI turned on for this one. Go to find distractions, people. That's it. It automatically detects all the distracting people. And if you want to add to it, you can paint. I don't see any distraction, but let's say you want to paint right here as well. Everybody is selected. Let's say also do the tripod here or whatever that is. Once you're ready, hit enter or return. Done. This is so darn clean. Have a look at it. This is so good. Now there are a couple areas which may need improvement, but overall, this is pretty amazing. Again, here's the before. All the people there, people at the back, people in the front. Here's the after. Crazy, crazy good. Before, after. Apple intelligence on the left, Photoshop on the right, without much effort. Definitely Photoshop clearly wins in this case. Now for the final example, this is where Photoshop decimates Apple intelligence. Have a look at this. Now we are in the cleanup section. Let's say you want to remove all of these distracting wires. It doesn't automatically detect that. You cannot click on a wire and it would remove it. There is no setting for it. You would have to paint on the wire and even then it's not going to be as good. And it will try to remove it and oh my gosh, it's making a curry right here. Similarly, if you have a look at the details here, see, it just, it's melting. And with this crappy result, you have to repeat the process for every wire in the photo. But in Photoshop, even with generative AI turned off, Let's create a brand new lab, go to find distractions and this time wires and cables. Again, you wanna make sure sample all layers is checked so that it samples from the other layers and have a look, this is gone, pretty magical. And you cannot even tell where the wire was. Here's the before, here's the after, everything gone. Before, after. Even if you have a look at this area, you cannot even tell before, 
after. So darn good. Now, there are a few discrepancies if you zoom in too hard and try to find too hard. But apart from that, this is amazing. And you can always repair those. Let's zoom out. Before, after. Before, after after. So that was AI versus AI, Apple intelligence versus Adobe intelligence. And I'm sure with time, Apple intelligence is going to get better. And even Adobe is going to get better. So we'll see where this goes. For now, Photoshop is just way better. But you have to understand, Adobe has been doing this stuff for many, many years, three decades or somewhat more. I hope you found this interesting. And if you did, make sure to give us a like. And also don't forget to subscribe and not just subscribe. Ring the bell so that you, my friend, don't miss any other future tips, tricks or tutorials. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in my next one. Till then, stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating.